yo! What is going on YouTube? This is your boy Dan, aka A-Job, bringing you guys the NPA Season 2 Draft Breakdown video, talking about the New York Metapods, the brand new franchise for your homie A-Drive, Coach A-Drive here, and uh, I'm really, really excited guys. If you didn't know, we did a live draft stream on my Twitch channel just, uh, just yesterday, actually, from the time this is getting uploaded, and I wanted to kind of make a quick video here, or not so quick of a video, to kind of break down some of the picks that I picked, why I picked them, and kind of how I plan to use them throughout the season to hopefully pick up a championship here. If you don't know, uh, I'm obviously the coach of the St. Louis Rampardos as well in the GBA and the UCL. However, with this new league, I decided to kind of rebrand myself and come out with a different team name, the New York Metapods. And the reason why is, one, I'm a huge New York Mets fan. Uh, it's my favorite professional sports team. I've been a Mets fan my whole life. Uh, two, I live in Connecticut, which is uh, really close to New York, so I guess that's the closest like sports team to me. Everyone always asks if I lived in St. Louis, but I didn't. Uh, and the St. Louis Rams moved to LA, and I got sick of hearing about people asking me about whether I was going to change the name to the Los Angeles Rampardos. And yeah, those are the main reasons. Plus, uh, bug the bug Pokemon are kind of my thing, if you haven't figured that out yet. So I decided to kind of go with a more bug theme. So Mr. Metapod and the New York Metapods are going to be our new team name here for the NPA, at the very least, and maybe some other leagues in the future. Wink. Anyway, so uh, as I've uh, kind of demonstrated in the past, we, we've kind of shown our battling prowess as the St. Louis Rampardos, and I fully expect that continue as the as the Metapod. So hopefully we have a uh, you know a pretty good team here that'll help us out and get us to another championship. This would potentially be our uh, fifth championship in a row. So we'll see how things go, but. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown kind of on how I went into this draft and what I plan on doing. My game plan was ahead of time. We're going to go through every single pick and I'll talk a little bit about the team as a whole as well. Of course, if you guys have any suggestions or any comments or anything like that, I'm curious. Let me know in the comment section below. I do read my comments, guys, so it's definitely worth your time to leave, uh, you know, a quick comment there. And of course, if you could leave a like rating on the video, that would be greatly appreciated. This helps out my channel a lot. So anyway, I think we can kind of jump into the draft here. So kind of pre-draft, my thought process was, uh, you know, this is the the very similar to the GBA style of drafting. In fact, I actually kind of introduced it to the NPA and kind of said, hey guys, like, you know, I think this drafting style is a really cool way to go. I think we can make it balanced and it's going to be tough, uh, you know, with 24 teams, but I think we can make it work. So we made some tweaks and kind of adjusted things. And uh, with 24 teams, things are a bit challenging to draft a team that you want because uh, there's so many teams that are picking. So there's so many opportunities for the picks that you want to be taken excuse me, taken. So it makes it a little bit challenging. And it turns out that I end up with the 23rd out of 24 picks, which means I have the 23rd pick. And then the last guy has the 24th and 25th pick. And then I have the 26th pick. And then it kind of goes from there, right? So I have a huge, huge period of time that I have to wait between, uh, you know, my picks. I get two picks basically right in a row. And then I have a huge period of time where I don't get to pick at all. So it's very, very tough to build a team that way. But in some regards, it can be an advantage too, because I get to pick two Pokemon that might complement each other pretty well. And that was kind of one of the things I focused on here. So going into this draft, I said to myself, like, you know what, here's what we got to do. I want to win a championship this season with this team. So I need to come up with a team that's going to be the team that no one can beat. And there's one playstyle in competitive Pokemon that is very, very reliable, and that's actually Stall. And I know a lot of people look down upon Stall and think negatively about playing with a bulky style of offense or bulky teams or just, you know, kind of balanced Stall, things like that. It's it's, a, it's such a negative vibe, but it's the most consistent playstyle. And while it can draw out battles to be longer, I think that there's still a, a tremendous amount of skill involved. I think there is a lot of team building that still goes into it. And it is truthfully the most comfortable playstyle that, that I feel the best with. I've demonstrated through other leagues that I can play with really any play style. I've shown that I can play with pretty off, pretty offensive teams with Mega Metagross and Hydreigon, Raikou, things like that. I've shown that I can play with a bulky offensive type of team with Chansey and Mega Sableye and Rotom Wash and Nido Queen. I've shown that I can play with a team that no one even expected to kind of win, which with my Mega Aggron and my Victini and my Sylveon and, and Salamence and things like that. So I, I've demonstrated the ability to, to run multiple different teams and different Pokemon, and there's a huge part of me that goes into a draft excited to try out different Pokemon and do different things. And then there's another part of me that kind of wants to stick with what I'm comfortable with and, and kind of expand upon stuff that I've done in the past. And I think the latter there is one of the things that I really wanted to focus on. Uh, going into this draft, in all honesty, my, my, my top three 
picks or my top three plans was to go with Mega Sableye, Chansey, and Gothitelle. The reason for that is I felt that if I kind of got those three guys and grabbed something like Tentacruel as well, I would not only be able to control hazards entirely without a problem, but I'd also be able to trap threats that could otherwise eliminate things like Sableye and Chansey and with Gothitelle and basically keep my opponent from having any sort of a chance against my wall core. Now you'll see that that strategy actually gets kind of... Uh, thwarted or thrown away very quickly but moving into the draft that was my plan i figured if i can get sableye which is a mega i'm very very comfortable with um i brought it to a championship it was the mvp of my team in gba season four if I can get Mega Sableye and build a team around that, I should be in good shape. I didn't anticipate anyone to take Chansey uh, so early on. It's a very good Pokemon, but I didn't anticipate anyone to take it. So I figured Sableye was my best first pick, and that's exactly what I went for. Uh, there was things like Mega Altari on the board and things like that, and, and I, I really wanted to go with a bulky style of play. I feel like Mega Sableye, again, is a Pokemon I'm very comfortable with. It's a Pokemon that I think can do a lot of work, and it just changes how your opponent plays. It keeps your opponent from using moves like Will-O-Wisp and Thunder Wave and Taunt. It keeps your opponent from setting a bench hazards like stealth rocks and so on it's got a decent amount of bulk and it does have a great typing only weak to fairy so i felt like it was a great pokemon to build my team around do i necessarily think it was a first round pick for me no i don't think sableye warrants a first round pick maybe a second round pick in a 24 team draft but not a first round pick but because it was so central to the team that i wanted to build i felt like i needed to grab it because if if, if it got drafted and i didn't get to take, take mega sableye then my entire plan for this draft was going to be out the window which ended up being out the window very very shortly thereafter so again you guys have seen me probably use mega sableye pretty effectively like i said it did win the mvp on my team in season four of the gba i think it's a very very good pokemon uh it does have knockoff it's got priority through shadow sneak and sucker punch it can be a calm mind variant where once you remove the threats in your opponent's team this thing can actually set up with calm minds and it can just sweep a team because you can't st stop it you can't taunt it you can't burn it you can't like you can use scold and stuff but it's very very tough to get around sableye especially when i know what my opponent's team is beforehand so that gives me a huge advantage with prepping with Sableye. I've even demonstrated in the past using things like Fire Punch Sableye to counter Scissor. I've used things like, uh, you know, you could use Metal Burst, and, and even I brought Counter Sableye in, at one point with Stall uh, instead of Prankster. So there's a lot of options. That Prankster on the first turn is useful. In the in the NPA, GBA, some of these leagues, we do have to Mega Evolve on the first turn. So Sableye doesn't have quite the dynamic abilities it otherwise would have, so it, it only gets Prankster the first turn before Mega Evolving. But it essentially gets Prankster and Magic Bounce on the same turn. So it's a very, very good Pokemon. And I felt like it was a great Pokemon to build a team around. And uh, it gives me a spin blocker. And one of the other things I really wanted to focus on in this draft is really having the ability to set up hazards, Toxic Spikes and Spikes and Stealth Rocks and, and potentially, you know, Sticky Web 2. So I felt that Sableye was definitely a great pick. And, and moving into the next pick, I, I knew there was two picks and then I got to go again. So I'm thinking, okay, I got my Sableye. Chansey is definitely my next pick. And I'm pretty confident in the fact that I'll be able to get Chansey. But, of course, the guy after me, the Cincinnati Crobats, does grab Chansey as his first pick. I'm very surprised. I actually kind of think he took it because I mentioned to the rest of the, the group that I wanted it. Um, which, I can't really hold anything against him for it, but I was a little bit salty. And that kind of made me make the decision for my next pick, which uh, handcuffed me in a little bit of a way, but also added a tremendous amount of bulk to my team. So rather than grabbing Chansey, which is what I really, really wanted, I ended up grabbing Cresselia, the Moon Duck in Tier 2. And... A lot of people were kind of mad at me for grabbing Cresselia. If you don't know, if you've never really seen Cresselia in a league format, many leagues actually ban Cresselia. They think that Cresselia should not even be allowed in the league just because it's so incredibly bulky. Like, it it takes it to another level. It really does. Like, it takes bulk to another level. It's got a great HP stat. It's got great defenses on both sides. It, it can set up. It can do a lot of different things. Uh, and this thing is a monster. And I felt that maybe it's not going to be perfect like Chansey Sableye was going to be, but I was like, you know what? Cresselia is just an amazing, amazing defensive Pokemon, and hey, you know what? If someone's going to snipe uh, Chansey from me, I'm going to make the rest of the league regret it. I'm going to go with Cresselia, and that's what my thought process was. Uh, at this point in time, my plan for the Gothitelle, Chansey Sableye, out the window. As soon as I grabbed Cresselia, I knew I wasn't going to grab Gothitelle anymore. I didn't want to have two Psychic-type Pokemon on my team uh, this early when I was building my team. I wanted to have diverse typings, so I knew I wasn't going to do anything with that, but I felt that Cresselia would give me other options in terms of trick room potential. Uh, it does have decent coverage options. It does get fairy type moves with uh, Moon Blast. It can, you know, like I said, Calm Mind set up. It can Toxic. It can Lunar Dance to heal up another Pokemon, like to get another Pokemon in for free. There's like so many things this thing can do. 
And the thing it does best is just wall things. It, it's just such a good wall. You need an amazing wall breaker to take this thing down. And I think that Cresselia and Mega Sableye together are going to form a phenomenal defensive core for me in a way. Now, they don't necessarily complement each other from a resistance weakness standpoint. Uh, they they make fighting types irrelevant. Um, but what Cresselia does do is, is, like I said, it just has such natural bulk that that is really unmatched there's not really any other pokemon that have the natural bulk that cresselia does and i figured mega stable i can sponge those knockoffs if it needs to and uh and cresselia be able to put in some work so that was kind of like my idea my thought process moving in to the first two rounds and i knew at this point in the draft i really didn't have another pick for another you know nearly 40 something picks so you got to remember here, the draft pool starts to get really, really thin all of a sudden, and I kind of handcuffed myself in another way because I grabbed a tier 2 Pokemon in Cresselia, and that kind of put me in a spot where I realized, okay, a lot of the tier 1 Pokemon that are available, I'm not really a big fan of at this point, so what do I do? Do I jump into tier 3? Do I jump into tier 2? Do I force myself into a tier 1 Pokemon I don't like? Well, my next pick comes around, and, and like I said, it's a long ways away, and I grabbed Entei. Now, uh, Latias, you can see, was the pick right before me, and I wasn't going to grab Latias again. I didn't want another Psychic type because I already had a Cresselia and I, I tried to pick diverse typings and I was like, alright, I need a Pokemon that is going to work with the weaknesses I have, right? So right now I have a Dart weakness with Cresselia and then I have, uh, you know, a Bug weakness, but I don't really care about that so much. But I care about the Fairy weakness that Mega Sableye has and you'll see throughout this draft I want to make sure I have a number of different things on my team that can respond to fairy types. Mega Stable Eye has one weakness, and that's fairy types, and I needed Pokemon that can check those. And I, I needed an offensive Pokemon as well to kind of round out this team, because I don't want to just have a stall team at this point. Now that I don't have Gothitelle, Sable Sableye, Chansey, I don't want a stall team. I want a bulky offense team. That's what my focus is in this draft, and I think... Grabbing Entei was a great, great decision. Entei, in the last couple leagues I've been in, has been in the top five of kills for that league in every league, man. There's a reason why. Entei has an amazing, amazing move called Sacred Fire, which has a 50% chance to burn. If you thought Skull was a great move, Sacred Fire is even better, man. And bolt and offensive fire types, for some reason, are just amazing in the draft league format. They just destroy Victini. Entei, Charizard, they're all so good. And I knew that Entei had to be the Pokemon I grabbed. It's just so incredibly hard hitting. It's got that 100 base speed, I believe. So it is relatively fast. It has priority and extreme speed, something that my teams in the past have not been able to utilize. And I've even seen some really creative sets with Entei through Gym Leader Geo and stuff, where he runs like, uh, you know, Weakness Policy and Solar Beam and, and Special Entei. So there is some versatility there as well. Not to mention just the fact that this thing is just a ginormous wall breaker. You just click Sacred Fire and you there's no switch-ins for it. There's very few switch-ins for it because you can't switch in physical attackers because if you get burned, you just lost like a huge Pokemon on your team. You can't switch it like if it, it could burn walls. Like if there's a wall that could like say Rotom, Rotom Wash, for example, switches in and yeah, it may take like 25% or 30%, but then if it gets burned, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's not like this thing is not going to be able to take more hits. Like uh, this Entei is about to run through my team. So Entei is just a tremendous, tremendous offensive Pokemon, and the statistics don't lie. Like I said, it, it consistently has shown itself in the top of the league for many, many seasons, and I have a lot of experience using it in the UU ladder, and I think it's going to be a great, great Pokemon uh, for our team, and I think we're going to put in some serious work here. I really look for Entei to put in a ton of work. So I grab my next Tier 2, so now I'm like, okay, so I have my two Tier 2 Pokemon, but I need a Tier 1, but the problem is there's not much left. There, at this point, I think there's Zapdos, Thunderous Eye, and Thunderous T. There's like Gudra and Infernape. A couple Pokemon like that, Keldeo, things like that, but the only ones I was really interested in at this point were like Dapdos, Thunderous, and Thunderous. Those are the only three that I was interested in, and I was like, okay, so I'm picking again in two picks, and Tentacruel was at the top of my list here. Tentacruel was like the number one Pokemon I wanted. I wanted the reliable Rapid Spinner. I wanted the Water type, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. But of course, the Cincinnati Crow, I, I kid you not, the Cincinnati Crobats take Tentacruel right before I get to take it, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I get sniped again. I was like, that's twice in a row that this kid has sniped me, and I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. So all my plans got the window and I'm like you gotta be kidding me, but I didn't want to grab that tier one yet I felt that it was worth my time to try to wait one more loop through the entire draft Before I grab thunderous or zapdos one of the thunderous is or zapdos because I felt like one of the three Probably will be there by the time it gets back to my pick and I felt that if I picked it now Then I was losing out on something better later So I took a very big gamble here at this point in the draft by going for a Moongus instead of grabbing One of the tier one Pokemon that I wanted because I could have put myself in a spot where I I got like a really bad tier one that didn't fit the team at all and it was a risk I wanted to take. It was a risk I felt that I needed to take to, to build a better team here. 
So coming back on the wheel here, I grab Amoongus, as you can obviously see here. Amoongus is a great defensive pivot Pokemon. It's got Regenerator, and that alone makes it amazing. But what it does also have is it's got Spore. Spore can put your opponent to sleep 100% of the time, assuming they don't have a Grass type. And you see the makings of a Firewater Grass Core here with Amoongus and Entei already. And I saw Gym Leader Geo actually take these two Pokemon and make them really, really work effectively. And I think because of my aggressive, aggressive doubling strategies and how I play against my opponents, I think a Pokemon like Amoongus is going to be huge huge for my team. Now, Amoongus is often looked at as like being a bulky wally type Pokemon, but it does have some offensive prowess as well. You can't kind of rule out the fact that it does get Sludge Bomb, it does get, you know, Giga Drain, it can run Foul Play as well. Uh, Spore is obviously one of its main sets, and usually you'll see this thing either Assault Vested or some sort of bulky, you know, defensive or physically or especially defensive set, but I felt that this Pokemon could be huge for me because, excuse me, it gives me one other fairy response. As I mentioned before, Sableye does have only one weakness, which is fairy types. And I felt that by grabbing Amoongus, I'd be able to do a couple of different things. One, get rid of any potential fighting types that want to face my team, because now fighting types are essentially useless against me. And two, give me another fairy response in case my opponent has a really good fairy type that I have a hard time dealing with. Something like an Azumarill or something like that, which otherwise would take down Mega Sableye. And I felt that Amoongus was just gonna give me that defensive support pivot Pokemon, put things to sleep, it can heal itself up with synthesis, and and you know, it, it's just a really good Pokemon. I felt that, you know, it's just gonna put in the finest of work. So anyway, here I am after round four with Cresselia, Amoongus, Mega Sableye, Entei. I realized next round, I 100%, 100% need to pick my tier one Pokemon because the pool is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Round five comes through and I say, okay, you know what? Based on the way Cincinnati Crobat's draft has been, they're not gonna grab a tier one Pokemon, I don't believe. So it's pretty safe for me to go, okay, you know what? I'm gonna grab something different. I'll grab my tier one on the wheel back. And you see right above me, actually, Thunderous uh, Incarnate was taken at this point in time, right before me. So had Thunderous Eye not been taken, that probably would have been my pick here. But instead, I go with Alamomola. Uh, there wasn't really much left on the draft board in terms of bulky water types. And I figured, you know what? Alamomola is huge setup fodder. I know that it's setup fodder, but it's it's very, very hard to set up on a team that I'm starting to build here because of Entei, because of Cresselia, because of Amoongus, because of Alamola. You really have, like, you can set up, but you're going to have to have some sort of insane wall breaker to break through this core. So setting up, set up sweepers aren't as scary as they otherwise would be. But this made me think about Pokemon like Ditto for later rounds. I think that Ditto could have been a really good pick or could be a really good pick moving forward here. But I figured Alamomola was going to be the Pokemon I needed. And again, another bulky Pokemon, another Pokemon with Regenerator. Gives me two Regenerator Mons, Alamomola and Amoongus. They're going to pair really, really nicely together. And then it also pairs nicely with Entei. So now I have this Firewater Grass Core that my team is built around with Pokemon like Mega Sableye and Cresselia. And you look at these five Pokemon, you're like... Dan, I hate you. What is with this bulk? What is with this? And I'm like, all right, I need to start to draft some offense here as well. And I need a little bit more speed. I want at least three Pokemon above the 100 base speed barrier because at least 100 or higher because that just gives you more team building options. It's kind of like one of my one of my rules. I try to get Pokemon in each section. So Pokemon that are slow doesn't really matter. Pokemon that hit that 70, 80 base speed, which I think is very important. And then those Pokemon that are going to be above the 100 mark, which can uh, kind of take down some of the other like 100, 105, 110. You just need faster Pokemon too, just so you don't get you know, outpaced on everything, you know. Um, so I figured all of Momola was a great Pokemon. Wish Passer, which is really nice. That could help pass Wishes to Sableye or Entei. Obviously, Regenerator. It's got Toxic, of course. Uh, it's got Scald for Scald Burns. And, you know, it could even run Mirror Coat, things like that. So it's not the worst thing in the world. And I believe it actually gets Yawn, too. I could be wrong there, but I think it gets Yawn. So... If I'm fearing, you know, my opponent's setting up on me, I believe I could yawn them and, and kind of keep them out. I'm actually curious. I'm going to check right now. I know this is kind of like, this is a live recording and I'm, you know, kind of talking through everything here, but I'm, I'm actually curious whether it does get yawned. So let me look really quickly for Mr. Alamomola here. But I don't know. I've used it, uh, you know, in, in another league. I actually have it in my A-Drive Army Battle League that I do. And it's been a pretty effective Pokemon. So let me just see if it gets Yawn. I feel like it might. Why do I feel like it does? It gets Pain Split. I didn't know it got Pain Split. God, it gets Knock Off, though. I don't think it gets Yawn, actually. Yeah, you just heard all that dinging. There's definitely no Yawn. Um, okay, so it doesn't get Yawn, so I stand corrected there. So anyway, that's why I wanted to check. But either way, it gets Knock Off for Utility, and it does have a lot of other options. So I do like Alamomola. I think it'll be a great pivot. I don't think it's a Pokemon I'll bring every week, but I think it's a Pokemon on that could really complement the rest of the team with its insane bulk. So, anyway, uh, the Crobats go next, and then I come back, and he grabs Staraptor, and I, I was kind of looking at Staraptor just for a fun pick, but I go with Thunderous Therian. 
Again, I wanted Incarnate for the 111 base speed and the Prankster ability, but I thought that would have probably been a little bit better for the team. But at the end of the day, Thunderous T, it was kind of a toss up anyway. Thunderous T is very good. It's very, very good. First of all, the thing that makes it very unique is it's got 101 base speed, which puts it above things like Victini, things like, you know, uh, why can't I think of things? Shaman and just all the 100 base speed Pokemon. There's so many of them, right? So many Pokemon hit that 100 speed Salamence, things like that. This is 101, so I always outspeed, which is really, really nice. Um, uh, I believe at level 50. I should probably check that too, but I'm pretty sure at level 50 will always outspeed, um, you know, Pokemon that are, you know, 100 base speed. So this thing rocks 145 special attack stat. It's also got a decent attack stat, I believe 105 as well. It can be a mix set. It can be a choice scarfer. It can be a nasty plot. It can be an agility set. I mean, this thing is the sweeper right here. This is the Pokemon that is going to put in the work. And we already know fast electric types are amazing in the draft league format. We have no doubt about that. It's been proven time and time again. Raikou, Jolteon, Manetric, like these Pokemon show themselves every season. And I've yet to see someone really use thunderous very effectively but i think it can fit into what i'm doing i think just just firing off those thunderbolts are going to be insane and i think i have the proper support to cover ground types as well with the moongus and alamomola and uh, i'll be looking in the rest of the draft to try to pick up some other answers for ground types but uh thunderous does get like sludge wave you know things like that so it does have a pretty wide excuse me kind of coverage options too that should not be slept on, you know what I mean? This thing can put in some work. It really, really can. Um, and like I said, there's just options for setting up. There's option for Scarp. There's option for Spec. I mean, 140 base special attack is insane. Like, that's just insane. This thing hits hard. Um, so it does have a little bit of a stealth route weakness, but you can see, you know, with that and Entei, but I do have Sableye, so uh, definitely on my radar to draft a Defogger or a Spinner later on just in case, but I don't really look at it as being too big of a deal. And this thing does get Volt Absorb too, so that's something kind of cool. It gets Volt Absorb, so that kind of keeps my opponent from firing off big Electro type attacks at my Alamomola. And if they're going to use Grass type attacks to hit the Alamomola, well, Amoongus doesn't care about those, neither does Entei, and so on and so forth. So I felt like, from a synergistic perspective, if that's even a word, uh, Thunderous was going to be really, really good for what I'm trying to do. And uh, again, there wasn't really much left in the tier one anyway, so I was kind of kind of constricted in what I could do. But I, th I, I had scouted Thunderous from like round three on, and I was like, all right, that's I think that's to sit there for a while so that's going to be the one i go for so that was kind of like my idea and my thought process going forward so now here i am sitting and i got another like 40 something picks to go or whatever and round seven comes through and i realized that i don't have a fairy type myself nor do i have uh, another offensive pokemon or a versatile pokemon a cleric that kind of thing and i was like you know what let me grab regular gardevoir um Regular Gardevoir is actually not that bad. I don't know why people don't really use it too much. It's got a base, a base 80 speed, I believe. Yeah, 125 special attack, so it hits pretty hard. It does get Moonblast and things like that. Uh, obviously gets the Psychic coverage as well, so Psychic and uh, Fairy is a pretty decent coverage in some respects because you can hit the uh, you know the Poison type switching in. And what this does is uh, it gives me a Pokemon that can use Trick, gives me a Pokemon that can just kind of be a Wall Breaker, it can be Scarfed, it can Will-O-Wisp things. It just does a lot. I felt like having a Fairy type Pokemon on this team it was going to be very useful, especially since I didn't really have a lot of responses for dark Pokemon. I realized that knockoff could be a little bit of an issue. Just in general, you always want to make sure you have uh, like some sort of knockoff. Uh, you know, not necessarily a Pokemon that could take a knockoff, but something that can deal dish damage to dark types. That was kind of my thought process because of a Cresselia. So I figured uh, Sableye, or I'm sorry, uh, Gardevoir would be a really good pickup for that. And I just wanted to have another Pokemon in that middle speed tier with a little bit of offense. I mean, 125 base special attack is no joke. Like Gardevoir used to be like a legitimate threat uh, at one point in time. And now that it's fairy typing, it's, it's much, much better than it used to be. And, you know, you can't sleep on 80 base speed. That's really not bad. You know, I've learned that you can make those kind of Pokemon work pretty effectively. And I figured that Gardevoir, it wasn't going to last much longer. It fell into tier three, I believe. So I knew I wasn't going to last much longer. And I wanted the fairy type. It's just a really smart idea to have a fairy type on your team. So I went with Gardevoir. That was that was my choice. There wasn't really much left for fairies. So like I said, the draft starts to get a little bit thinner here. And my team's already relatively defined at this point. So it's just a matter of picking up Pokemon that are going to complement the rest. So then uh, we got the wheel pick here coming through. And I was praying to RNG Jesus and whoever else that this would not get taken. I, I slept on this thing for so long i wanted to grab this in like the first couple rounds but i knew it wasn't worth it it needed to be a later round pick here we are in the eighth round and i grabbed scolipede and i was stoked about this pick i was so excited i'm being straight up with you guys i wanted scolipede so badly guys no one knows how good scolipede is until you see me use it like i'm just being honest i use this thing in another league called the a drive battle league 
which is not on my channel, but I do it off, off, off screen here. And I've been running through kids with this thing, man. This thing's amazing. I've used it so dynamically. I've used it offensively. I used it as a spike, T spike setter. I've used it as, a, you know, a check. I even ran Koba Berry on it one time, which I think is the flying reduction berry, to like check a Talon Flame or something. Like, and rock slide it. It gets Earthquake. It gets Rock Slide. It gets Poison Jab. It gets Mega Horn. It gets the Toxic Spikes. Like, I wanted another fairy response to help out Mega Sableye, and I found a perfect one here. 112 base speed, I believe, which makes this thing just outpace so much of the competition. Speed boost makes this thing even better. And again, you can even make this thing defensive if you wanted to. It could be like a Focus Sash Endeavor lead. It just gave me more options uh, in terms of hazard setting. I really, really wanted T-Spikes on this team. I really wanted T-Spikes on this team. I felt that without my opponent being able to rapid spin against me because of Mega Sableye, because we have a 24 team draft here. I was like, we have 24 teams going. That means that each team, the likelihood that a team is going to have a good rapid spinner or a good defogger is going to be less because there's more teams picking, right? So I was like, I can take advantage of that and grab a, the, one of the best entry hazard setters in the game in Scolipede, and we can make things work. Now, the MPA does not allow for the baton pass uh, to pass speed boost and attack boost like Smogon rules. The GBA does, so you lose a little bit of versatility there. I can't Swords Dance baton pass sword stance and speed boost but i can pass on speed boost if i want to so i don't plan on using scolipede necessarily like that as much but it could be a great pivot pokemon and i could pass some of those speed boosts imagine passing a speed boost to a thunderous and then just clicking you know thunderbolt the entire game and then that's it you know so this thing could put in the work and again it's attack stat isn't the greatest, but it has pretty high base power moves. You throw a life orb on this thing and it hits really, really hard. And it's just so fast, especially with that speed boost. It just allows it to outpace the competition. It's got great coverage moves. Again, the, the ability to set up toxic spikes is the key here. And I think I have a couple different answers to handle poison type Pokemon in Cresselia, in Gardevoir, things like that. So I felt like Skullipede was a great Pokemon. And this was probably one of the Pokemon I was most excited to pick because I think I can make it work really, really well. I really do. I feel so confident in the fact that I can make Skullipede look awesome this season. And, and I think it fits right into what I'm trying to do. I get my bug type Pokemon. I'm sure a lot of people were waiting for, and uh, I'm hoping that Skullpede's going to be able to put in the work. So, anyway, we got a long, long way until our pick again. As like I said, we have the wheel pick here. So the last three picks coming through. Pick nine comes through, and I was like, all right, 100%. I need to get a Stealth Rocker. Absolutely zero doubt about it. I need a Stealth Rocker. I need a Pokemon that's going to be able to, you know, sponge some hits, get up Stealth Rocks, maybe give me some priority as well. And I felt that Drudagon was a great pick for that. Um, if you haven't known too much about Drudagon, it can be very, very effective. It gets Rough Skin. It gets Sheer Force. It's got a number of different coverage moves, including Gunk Shot to hit Fairy types. It's got Elemental Punches. It's got Dragon moves. And Sheer Force Life Orb Drudagon is scary, dude. Imagine me passing a speed boost onto this thing and just clicking Dragon Claw or any of its cover. This thing's a monster, and it's got so much bulk, not to mention it can set up Stealth Rocks. It can use Sucker Punch. It can Pursuit. It's got so many options on this thing. It's got Glare to potentially paralyze Pokemon. Come on. I love Drudagon. I've always wanted to use it. I, I, I've had it used against me. And while it's not one of those Pokemon that's going to, it's not going to lead the league in kills by any means, but it's going to be the glue that holds a team together and really patch up some of the problems I had. It covers the fire types. I, I love pure dragon, first of all. Pure dragon type is amazing. Only being weak to really ice, um, you know, ice and, and dragon itself and fairy, really. But I have the responses to those other types in the rest of my team. So I'm less concerned about that. I just love everything about Drudagon. And, and the big thing is the stealth rocks. That's that's the big key right there. Being able to set up hazards. Now I have Drudagon. I have Skolipede. I have two multiple. I have multiple options for hazards. I have Sableye to balance them back. And I just I just love Drudagon. I thought this was a great pick. And I'm actually surprised that I got to grab it. I thought it would have been taken by this point in time, but uh, I felt like this was this was the one I wanted. I need, I wanted Dredagon. I was very happy being able to snag Dredagon here at this point in the in the draft. Ah, sorry, a lot of talking. Anyway, so here I am on the wheel. We got the Crobats picking and. Uh, here was a tough choice. I knew I needed a tier five. So at this point in the draft, I needed a tier five, and then I needed either another tier five or a tier four. I had those two options. So. Because of those options, I looked through the tier 5 Pokemon. Most of the tier 5 Pokemon that were really good got moved up to tier 4 for the draft because of the 24 teams. So we kind of had to balance a couple things. So there wasn't really that much stuff in tier 5 that I liked. Um, there was one particular Pokemon, I'm trying to think of what it was, that I really wanted. But I think it got taken or whatever. And I was like, you know what, I need another Stealth Rocker. I don't have a Steel type, and Steel types are very, very valuable. They can be very, very valuable. So it's like, you know what, let me grab Steelix, you know? Uh, Steelix is something I've yet to see really effectively in a draft-like format. I've seen Mega Steelix, perhaps, but never really Steelix himself. And I was like, you know 
what? I'm gonna grab Steelix because this thing's got insane defense stats. It's got a decent attack stat. Don't forget it does get Sheer Force. So you can run Sheer Force Life Orb with this thing. It's got Trick Room potential. Uh, you know, now I have Gardevoir. I have, you know, Cresselia. Some Trick Room options here as well. And I don't think you can sleep on this thing. Not to mention it can absorb hits from Fairy types. It's a great, uh, you know, response to a lot of different offensive moves. Gives me another Fairy response. And now I have my Fairy Dragon Steel Core and my Firewater Grass Core. Dragon Steelix Gardevoir. Definitely not top tier Fairy Dragon Steel, but it's Fairy Dragon Steel nevertheless. And then we got Firewater Grass, Entei, Amoongus, Alamomola. Again, I don't think that's tier one. I think it's like a tier two, you know, little core there. But I think you throw Mega Sableye Cresselia in the mix and you're like, how do you even break down these walls? You're not going to. So again, bulky offense is kind of my strategy moving into this. And I think Steelix is going to be pretty sweet, man. I really do. Uh, it's got heavy slam. It, it doesn't have the worst stats in the world. It's not amazing by any means, but you got to realize in counter team format, so many Pokemon are so different because you know what your gonna, opponent's going to bring. So I know if Steelix doesn't have a chance this matchup, then I can make it work. And really the weaknesses that Steelix has, you know, ground type and, and fighting type and things like that, the rest of my team sponges really well. Like I have levitators, I have floating Pokemon. You do not want to bring fighting types against me. It is useless against the team I have. There's no reason to bring a fighting type. You're going to get destroyed. Um, you know, and, and with my regenerator cores, I just felt like Steelix was going to be great. And it gives me another stealth rock option if I don't want to bring Juttergon. So now I have three options for hazards. And I was like pretty hyped about that. And, uh, you know, now again, I'm the second to last pick in the draft now that we're in the 11th round. And the last pick uh, that I'm going to grab, or the second to last pick of the draft overall, and my last pick is going to be Shiftry here, uh, Mr. Pinocchio. So Shiftry was not necessarily on my radar. I really want to ditto, as I mentioned earlier. Earlier, but I figured you know what I don't have any dark types uh, aside from Sableye uh, Shiftry gives me another Pokemon that can run knockoff it gives me a grass type that can be more offensive than a Moongus will likely be uh, it does have priority in Sucker Punch and the big thing it does have is defog and while I don't foresee hazards being a huge issue against me uh, through Mega Sableye I really wanted to have a little bit of a backup option here, so I figured uh, defogging Shiftry would be pretty good. I don't have a huge stealth route weakness, really just the Thunderous and the Entei, but and the Skull P2, but with Mega Sableye, I feel like I'll be able to kind of hold it down, and, and the reason I feel that way is in GBA Season 4, I think Stealth Rocks were only set up against me two times in like 13 matches or something so it just doesn't really happen that often so the defogger rapid spinner wasn't as important to me i felt like i could prioritize other things so that was kind of my thought process here with shift tree um as my last pick i was like you know what it's it's a really good pokemon it's not a bad pokemon at all it gives me a little bit more offense and kind of sits in that mid speed tier i think it's like base 70 or 80 or something like that so i was like you know what i think shift tree will be great i don't know how much i'll use it in all honesty um it's definitely like the pokemon that i think fits the team the least that and Steelix really the two that I would like the last few picks but again here we are and in, in over 250 picks now had taken place before this guy gets graft, uh, drafted so I'm like you know what for being the 263rd Pokemon drafted overall or whatever that the number was Shiftry is pretty darn good when you think about the 260 something others were picked before it so I was pretty happy with that so there's our team right there man your New York Metapods moving into the NBA season 2 the, the league actually starts this weekend on Sunday so you'll see the first week of matches right away I believe I play the uh, LA Apoms or something like that so we'll see how things go but I'm just really hyped about this team I'm really hyped about this season I think it's gonna be a great season for us I think we're gonna have a lot of fun and uh, I think we got a really good team i think our team i really feel like our team can win a championship i'm just gonna be honest this is probably one of the best teams i think i've ever drafted um i really really like my my gba season team right now and i think my ucl team is just insane but this is a team that i feel comfortable with this is a combination of pokemon that i've used in the past that i know work that i know work with my playstyle, and pokemon that i haven't used but i have a lot of faith in the fact that i can make them look awesome and that's really my focus here so there you go, man. That's going to be it. Our question of the day is, uh, how do you think the Metapods draft for this season? On a scale of 1 to 10, give me a rating. Let me know what your favorite Pokemon on the team are going to be. I'll be tweeting out over the next few days, trying to get nickname ideas and stuff like that. I can tell you, I know the Thunderous is probably going to be nicknamed something like Nimbus or some sort of Harry Potter reference. Cresselia, I have no idea. Uh, Amoongus, not really sure yet, to be honest. Um, you know, I think the Drudagon, I have. I mean, I don't know. I know that, I can tell you the shiny forms, though. I know I know Skolipede is going to be shiny. I know Entei will be shiny because the event it has to be safe. Sableye will be shiny. Steelix, Drudagon are both going to be shiny. Uh, Shiftry is probably going to be shiny. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you all that information at some point too. But we'll try to pick this, some nicknames and, and stuff like that. It should be a good time. So that is going to be it for me, guys. I'm sorry I talked your ear off for over a half hour here. But hopefully it was worth your time. And hopefully you enjoyed and you're excited for the Metapods. Hit them with a heart and baby. That's going to be it for me. My name is Dan Elsko by A-Drop. And I'm going to catch you guys later. Peace.